Hey everybody, welcome back. The NVIDIA app has been updated in anticipation of the release of DLSS 4 tomorrow. And I wanted to talk to you about this, go through the features, what we're gonna be able to do with the new app relating to DLSS 4 once it's released. I also wanted to go over some general things about the app. There's a lot of differences between this and GeForce Experience, for example. And a lot of the things that we've been doing using NVIDIA Control Panel are now integrated into this app as well and a lot easier to use. And there's some other things that we can talk about as well. So let's get started, we'll go through this quickly. So here is the updated NVIDIA app. And of course they're talking about DLSS and the new RTX cards that are coming out tomorrow, in fact. And I'll go through what we can do with the app to integrate DLSS 4 into games like Microsoft Flight Simulator and Flight Simulator 2024. Ostensibly, we should get what they call day zero compatibility. I don't know how it's day zero, it should be day one, but we should get day zero compatibility with DLSS 4 and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and 24. In other words, it should work out of the gate from day one. However, there's no guarantee that that's actually gonna be true. We don't know whether there's gonna be a rollout of an update for both of the Sims or what the situation is gonna be. What we do know is that we can use the NVIDIA app to force DLSS 4 into the sim. So I'll show you how to do that. But before we do that, let's go through the app here. The first big difference between the app and GeForce Experience, a lot of people have kind of a bad taste in their mouth about GeForce Experience, which I understand. You do not have to log in to use the NVIDIA app, which is fantastic. There's no, no more of that, which really was kind of a pain. When you come here over on the left to drivers, click on drivers, it's gonna show you what driver you have installed, which for me is 571.96. You can choose between game ready drivers or studio drivers. Obviously for simmers, we're gonna to wanna to use the game ready driver. And the first cool thing, or I guess the second cool thing about the NVIDIA app is automatic driver rollback. Now I've just updated this app and I have the preview driver 571.96 installed. So technically I don't have a previous driver that was installed via this app. So there's therefore there's nothing for me to roll back to. However, let's say tomorrow when DLSS 4 comes out, there's a new driver, call it 573.11, whatever it might be. If I install that driver through the app, and then for whatever reason, there's you know performance degradation or I'm getting some sort of an issue where I wanna roll back to 571.96, I'm gonna be able to do that with one click right here in the app. It's at the bottom of the driver's page. There'll be a, a bit of text here and a button you can click on. One click, roll back to the previous driver. We come over here into graphics, you're gonna see program settings and global settings. We'll take a quick look at the global settings first. Now RTX Dynamic Vibrance I've used in videos before and it's basically a filter, it's a one-click filter. It gives a, a bit more dynamism to your scene. It makes the colors pop more. The NVIDIA overlay does have filters that you can use. I think there's some 20 odd filters that you can play with different colors and brightness and contrast and so on and so forth. I always kind of feel like once I start going down that rabbit hole, it just gets to be kind of overwhelming for me. The other thing is what looks good on my screen may not look good on your screen. So you can't really just watch somebody's video and copy their NVIDIA filters and get the same result. I find RTX Dynamic Vibrance to be really kind of a cool thing, although I'm not using it right now. These are some of the things that are from NVIDIA Control Panel, DSR Factors, AKA the Holy Grail and smoothness of course when you look at these so you got the 1.78 and the 2.25 and then you have smoothness down here and smoothness is actually not smoothness it's sharpness i don't know why they call it smoothness they do when i use dsr factors i tend to use 2.25 and i find that the smoothness setting at 60 to be pretty much perfect that's that's where i like to run it Low latency mode, the recommendation now is to turn this off in NVIDIA Control Panel and or now the app and turn it on in the sim, which is the reverse of what we had been doing. 
you have a frame rate cap, your GP, your G-Sync compatible, you know, compatibility, whether you've got a G-Sync compatible monitor or not, power management mode, shader cache size, V-Sync, and some uh, VR and a VR setting here. Now, when we go into the program settings, you can see there's Microsoft Flight Simulator 24 and 2020. And the first thing I'll tell you, if you're familiar with the settings recommendations from GeForce Experience, they were atrocious. They were not good at all. And that is very much different here in the NVIDIA app. This, you can see the suggested settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 are basically exactly the same as what I have for my own settings. They're slightly different. For example, ambient inclusion, I have ultra, it recommends high, um, contact shadows. I mean, just very, very small things. It does recommend that I use uh, DLSS performance mode and the upscaled DLDSR to 4K, which I, prior to DLSS 4, I didn't think worked as well in Flight Sim 24 as it did in 2020. That was my so-called ho holy grail settings. Wasn't particularly pleased with it in 2024 like I was in 2020, but maybe that's gonna change now with DLSS 4. Come here to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, very much the same case. You can see the recommended settings it has for me and my settings are really pretty much the same. Again, a couple of things, ambient occlusion, cube map reflections, depth of field, not a whole lot of uh, change overall. And again, the DLDSR stuff that it recommends and so on and so forth. One thing I will tell you, when you download and install this app, it is going to give you the, it, it's going to automatically pre-check, so to speak, the box that says to optimize the games that, you've, that, that the app will find once you install it. Make sure you uncheck that. You don't want it to automatically optimize everything because what's going to happen when you install the app, it will change all the settings for your sim or sims, and you want to be careful of that. So make sure when you install the NVIDIA app, don't select the automatic optimization option. Make sure that's unchecked. Come here to system. This is another interesting feature. This is your display. This video tab is for things like if you're watching videos on your screen, uh, you know, I don't know whether it be movies or YouTube, that kind of thing. So it's not applicable to anything that we do with the sim. However, performance here, this is automatic GPU tuning. And there's a couple important things to know about this. Number one, it's one click. You just click here to enable it. It's gonna automatically overclock your GPU. The important thing about this, first of all, it's a very conservative overclock. You can see my GPU tuning plus 76 megahertz, my VRAM plus 200. But the second important thing here is that overclocking your GPU using the NVIDIA app does not void your GPU warranty. That's very important to know. So normally when you're fussing around with your GPU and you overclock it, your warranty has gone. Not when you overclock it with the NVIDIA app. Now, of course, it's as I said, it's a conservative overclock, but that's what I want. I don't want to burn out my GPU or, or bust it, you know, trying to overclock it. Next up, if we come down here to settings, the NVIDIA overlay, that's the one thing that I use quite a bit. If you turn that on with this button here, and Alt-Z to open, we'll go into that in a second. Drivers, automatically down, download and let me choose when to install. I don't do that, I just, you get a notification in the app that you've got a new driver available and then I download and install it. We go here and we click Alt-Z to go into the NVIDIA overlay. Now these are things that I use uh, to record. I do that obviously a lot of times in my flights. Instant replay, click on instant replay and make sure it is turned off because if, it's, if, if you have instant replay turned on, it's gonna continuously capture your gameplay. And obviously if it's recording in the background, it may have a performance impact and you don't want that. Don't enable this. You don't want it automatically recording everything that you do. If you go here into the, click on the gear icon for the settings, there's a heads up display. Now this is, 
the FPS, the overlay, the performance overlay that I have in my videos, and a lot of people have asked me about this overlay and where I get it. I get it right here from the NVIDIA app. It's very easy. You can choose where you want it to be. You can choose the layout. You can choose the font size, the color, but the way you can actually configure this heads up display, the statistics overlay, if you come back here and go back to the main settings and you come down here to statistics on the lower left, click on that and it's gonna say, show statistics in heads up display. And the way you turn it on and turn it off is Alt R. That's the standard hotkey to turn it on and off. But right here is the statistics view. You can either have basic, which gives you frame rate, GPU utilization, CPU utilization, and PC latency, or advanced, which is what I use, which gives you FPS 1% low, which tells you when you can expect stutters. So if you're getting stutters in the sim, you're gonna see a low number. Let's say you've got an FPS average of, of 60, but you're getting stutters, you're gonna see FPS 1% low might be 10 or it might be five or whatever. I also like to see my GPU utilization and my CPU utilization so I know how much the sim is taxing both of those pieces of hardware at any given time. Now the other thing we have is game filters. If you click Alt F3, and these are the filters that I talked about before. They're not open, they're not available right now because I don't have the sim open, but RTX Dynamic Vibrance is the first one that I talked about. Then they've got Sharpen and Auto Depth of Field and Black and White, and Brightness and Contrast, and so on and so forth. You can set these here and you can create different profiles. You can create up to four profiles. And then to switch between the profiles, what you do, come up here to Settings, click on the gear icon, and then click on Shortcuts. If you come down here to Toggle Profiles, this is profile toggle profile one on and off. I've set it alt Q. You can just set it to whatever you want. Toggle profile two, click whatever you think, maybe alt W and then alt E for profile three. And then when you're in the sim, if you want to see what the different, you know, switch back and forth between your profile and just the standard visuals, you can just use those hotkeys. It'll switch back and forth and you can see what the difference is. And you can set all these different things as well. All R again is that top, the statistics overlay. So now specific to DLSS 4. Come back here to the graphics session, section, and this is what we're gonna look for tomorrow. Microsoft Flight Simulator 21 and, or 24 and 2020 are both supposed to be right out of the box DLSS 4 compatible. I don't know if DLSS 4 is going to be updated into both sims tomorrow or if we're gonna to have to inject it ourselves. If we have to inject it ourselves, it's very easy. So you come back here into graphics, click on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, come down here to the bottom, and you see here DLSS override model presets. And what that is going to be, right now it says unsupported because it's not released yet today. It's gonna to be released tomorrow. We're gonna to be able to click on this here and select which version of DLSS we want in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Now, let's say they do update it tomorrow, a Sobo and Microsoft do update it tomorrow. We've seen in the past where with SIM updates of any kind, even ARAC updates, they'll roll back the DLSS file. So we, we really have no idea until we see how it's gonna work and, and if it's gonna work, we can dictate this ourselves with the NVIDIA app right here. Uh, frame generation, you're actually not gonna have to worry about this unless you have a, an RTX 50 series card. This is gonna allow you to override DLSS multi-frame generation or games uh, for games that don't have it. Microsoft Flight Simulator 24 does and presumably DLS, um, DLSS multi-frame generation in the RTX series 40s cards, 50 series cards, excuse me, is going to work. For other games you may play that don't have the multi-frame generation integrated, you can force it right here. Super resolution, we don't have to worry about because that is integrated into Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and 24. So if we click here on Flight Sim 2020, come down here again, DLSS override model presets right here. Last thing, the download 
just click here to download the exe the executable save it run the executable again the one thing to remember please don't rush through the installation look for that automatic game optimization setting and make sure you unselect it before installing the app because you don't want it just to automatically optimize quote unquote your games even though i think it does a very good job of the optimizations so just be aware of that when you're when you're doing the install so to me the new nvidia app is fantastic i've been using it since it first came out in beta probably eight or ten months ago they are integrating a lot of the things into this app that were that are currently in the nvidia control panel nvidia control panel is eventually going to be retired and you're going to have to use this app to access those features may as well going to jump on it now in my opinion it's it's very user friendly does a really nice job offers some nice benefits for us as flight simmers if you guys have any questions or comments please don't hesitate to put them in the comment section below hope everybody's doing well and we'll look forward to dlss 4 tomorrow take care